If you've spent any reasonable amount of time in the world of Subnautica, chances are it has trained you to be extremely cautious and wary of everything that's happening around you. After all, the world is full of dangers which will take any opportunity to jump at you, consume your body and jump scare the hell out of you in the process. So, if you just happen to see a big, dark, shadowy shape somewhere in the blue ocean out there, chances are you might not want to approach it right off the bat. Today, however, we will be talking about a creature which does from the distance appear as a large shadowy blob in the darkness, but is no more dangerous than your average peeper. We will be talking about the Reef Bag Leviathan. I will be telling you what we know about these creatures, where on the map you can find them, how their life cycle probably works, and in the end we might even go into a little bit of speculation surrounding the lore and additional information about them. Of course, just as with all of my other lore videos, this video might contain spoilers to the story of Subnautica, so if you don't want to have anything from the story spoiled to you, I would advise clicking off the video and coming back later. Anyways, with that out of the way, grab your scanner, climb out of that underwater base, and let's go. Now just having Leviathan in their name should already suggest that the reef bags are absolutely humongous. In fact, they are the second largest passive life form in the world of Subnautica as of right now, and they tie with the sea dragon Leviathans for the second largest creature overall. Now if you were to take a look at them, most of its body is comprised of a very thick, dark and blue exterior with a somewhat smaller rounded and triangular front, which is being moved by three small rip-like tentacles in the back which are attached to a smaller addition to the body extending down from its belly. Now because of their generally calm and slower lifestyle, many of the adult reef backs have developed patches of coral and other flora on their backs, a trait which is lacking with the juveniles, and these often support other types of life as well. On either side of their lower body, there are eight yellow bioluminescent bulbs. The purpose of these is currently unknown, except for the fact that they serve some purpose in the digestive system of a reef bag. However, several similarities have been drawn between this appendage and the algae gland found on the tail of a gasopod. Now, as already mentioned, the behavior of these things is rather calm and collected and for most of their life, they slowly and gently drift across the open waters in many regions and biomes of the Subnautica planet. In most cases, you will see them swimming in groups of two or more. And as an interesting fact, you almost never ever see them dive or change their attitude unless they are to bump into an obstacle. The juvenile brief bags are generally about a quarter of the size of an adult and you can often find them as part of the herd as well. In terms of communication, the reef packs will often emit a range of echoing low frequency sounds somewhat similar to a whale. Which is further supported by the fact that they will only ever do this with other reef packs nearby ruling out the possibility of this being used as echolocation. Now even though I already mentioned that these things are completely passive, I'm sure some of you will still try attacking them, which is of course a possibility. If the reef bag is exposed to any damage, they will move slightly faster for a little bit and they can also emit a range of the echoing low frequency noises mentioned before, but in general they will put up no resistance whatsoever, so if you are dedicated enough to work through their 10,000 unit large health pool, you can actually get to the point of killing them. And yes, while the reef bag will put up basically no resistance for this, some cautions should still be taken because the ecosystems that exist on their backs can sometimes contain tiger plants which will attack the player if you get too close to them. Funny enough, as far as adult reef bags go, barnacles can sometimes be found growing on their backs and these can contain two separate materials, either silver ore or copper. Now when talking about the life cycle of these creatures, if we take the databank entry, we know that their lifespan most likely spans several centuries, 
if they survive their initial growth cycle. From the way their eggs look and the size of their initial growth stages, it would make sense that for a certain amount of time after hatching, they would be very vulnerable to carnivorous creatures and other leviathans. Now, this is basically all the information that we have about the reef bags from what the game offers us up front. However, there are a few speculations and a few additional points we might be able to draw from observing them and observing the general fauna of Subnautica. First of all, as already mentioned, chances are in their earlier development stages, these creatures often succumb to predators such as carnivores or other leviathan forms. This information combined with the relatively small number of individual reef bags on the map can lead you to believe that during mating season they lay a larger number of eggs, out of which then only very few individuals survive and make it into the adult stages. Theoretically speaking, it is also possible that the stage of development that we observe in the game is not the final for the reef bag and that at some point they move towards the crater edge and eventually out to grow into their further adulthood stages. This could also work together with the fact that while the game does refer to them as herbivores, the databank entry states that they are planktivorous. Another interesting fact that some people have theorized is that in the adult reef bags there might be some enzymes and some pieces of the antidote to the Cara virus as only juveniles can be ever found infected, whereas the adults cannot be. And now, just to end this video off, a few interesting facts about the reef bags and their development. Originally, reef bags were intended to submerge in sandy areas, whereas increased activity in those areas would simply make them reveal themselves and then slowly swim to a safer area. And also, initially, the player was intended to be able to grab onto the tentacles of a reef bag to hitch a ride. However, for several reasons, most likely also including the slow speed of the reef bags, this interaction was now dropped. Now finally, even these massive creatures are not completely free of video game glitches, as there are two particular ones which seem to be rather reoccurring and are somewhat interesting. In one of them, there used to be a chance that a very large, almost giant, reef bag could spawn, sizing anywhere from 5 to 7 times the size of a regular adult reef bag. And also, if caught on some geometry close to the surface, there is a chance that this colossus might just start randomly spinning out of control on the surface, which looks equally horrifying as it looks entertaining. But anyways, with that, that is all the information I could dig up on the Reef Bag Leviathans. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if there is anything that I forgot to mention or some theory that you would like to discuss, make sure to leave it down in the comments below and I'm sure other people would like to read it or maybe respond to it as well. If you enjoyed this video, maybe consider leaving a like, commenting or subscribing. All of those would be very much appreciated. I want to wish you all a beautiful rest of today and I'll see you in whatever next video I make. Bye bye.